Welcome to the Master Your Millions podcast, the show all about your financial potential and leaving a legacy for future generations. Here are your hosts, Jason and Scott Henderson. Welcome back, everyone. I am your host, Scott Henderson, and my co-host is Dr. J. We are experienced investors with a huge advantage as we have been able to learn from our family that has well over 100 years of experience in real estate and other alternative investments. Here on Master Your Millions, we seek to share that experience that we've learned and expand our knowledge as we talk to the top leaders in alternative areas of investing. Today, we are super excited for our guest, Jason. Tell us who's coming on. Well, we have Lila Woolwind, and believe it or not, she might be better known as Ethan and Devin's mom. She's originally from Kansas, spent some time in Chicago before she landed in Ohio, met Eric, who's also been one of our guests before, the dad, if you will. And then she has uh, started in being a mom, you know, Eric, uh, not Eric, but Devin and Ethan are her two sons, the ones that we have interviewed before, and we thought it would be helpful for our listeners to find out a little bit of wisdom from the mom, how she helped mentor them. She has homeschooled them, um, how that has gone, and get a little feel for how she has matched being a mom and a business person as she is a uh, property manager as with being the mom and also Sounds like an, an avid gardener and an amazing uh, farmer. As you can almost say she has over 100 uh, fruit trees on on her property and does all kinds of things. So we're super excited and then grateful, Lila, that you're part of our podcast today. Well, thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. I really have a passion for helping other families get their kids involved into things like business and real estate. I find that so many families think that you know, business and personal life have to be two separate things. And it's my belief that those shouldn't be separate. They they need to be integrated. And that's why we wrote our book, The Family Success Triangle, is to communicate how one thing can really make the other so much better. So I, it's a concept not a lot of people are familiar with, but being a better at business has made me a better mom and being a better mom has made me a better business person. And it is amazing the lessons that carry over from one to the other. Uh, for I example, uh, my kids have taught me so much about motivation. You know, when I went to hiring people for my business, I always thought that, you know, people go to work because they want money. But it's so much more than that. Some of them are are looking for, you know, a, a purpose, something that gives them drive to get up every morning. And really, it wasn't until I watched how my kids get motivated that I really got the lessons on how to motivate my team. But for example, I even wrote about in the book, Ethan's whole purpose for starting to walk was because he wanted to go to a martial arts class that his brother was attending and he couldn't walk yet. So of course we can't take him to this class. So De Eric literally looked at Ethan and said, you can't go with Devin until you can walk. And Ethan looked at him and then literally stood up and took his first steps. So he wasn't gonna let anything hold him back or hold him down. So it was all about the motivation to go to that class that got him walking. And I took that into my business and tried to figure out what do these people that are working for me actually want and need? And how can I address that as well as keep the business running smoothly? And it's made my team so much stronger. I love that. That's a great example. You said you started off with that you're very passionate passionate about doing this for families what has other than your own the success that you've seen in your own family what has helped you to have that passion I had so many problems in school my mom was my first grade teacher so you'd think I'd love school right and I, I learned how to play the game well I figured out that what they want me to do is memorize this information take this test get a good grade and then move on to the next subject whatever that happened to be and I got really good at the game and I, I was getting A's and B's and people kept telling me how a good student I was and how smart I was, but I didn't feel smart. I would get out in the world and it, it was so confusing to me and the information I was learning didn't seem to really help me in my life. And then I met Eric in college and I had this light bulb moment because I, I really thought he was an anomaly at first. He would take something that he learned in, you know, math class and he would apply it to English class and he would take something he learned in science class and apply it to cooking. 
And I'm like, how is this guy putting all this information together? And, and it, he just seemed like a genius to me. And he just looked at me, he goes, I'm not really a genius. He goes, I'm just actually learning the information. And if you learn it, you can apply it anywhere. And that was just such a different concept for me because I was so used to playing this game of memorize, regurgitate. And, and then all of a sudden I started changing how I was learning things. And I realized that if you can actually learn these things, you're so much better off. And so I knew when I had kids, I really wanted to do that for them. And I knew if I sent them into the same school system I went into, they were going to have the same problems that I was having. So I, I decided that I wanted to homeschool our children, which I didn't know a lot about at the time. And I needed to convince Eric, you know, how, why that was a logical thing to do. And uh, it, it took meeting my cousins, who were the only people I knew that were homeschooled. And when he met them, he realized how smart and mature and, and how much better off they seemed to be than, than their peers. And so he agreed to do it. And that's, that's what really made what we did with our kids so easy for us and so much better. Um, it, it really it gave us the freedom to teach our kids wherever we were which meant we could travel, we could, you know, still go to all these other conferences and educational opportunities that we were taking advantage of. Um, and then we could teach them whatever we wanted. I literally had a business and investing class for our kids from the time they were in preschool on. And, and you'd think, well, what can you teach a preschooler? But you'd be amazed what these kids can learn. Um, and, the, and the third thing that homeschooling really gave us freedom to do is, is to pick our teachers. You can't, can't necessarily do that in all schools. But if we wanted our kids to learn about sales, we could take them to go hear Blair Singer talk about sales. Or we could, you know, if they want to learn marketing, we could take them to Mark Victor Hansen and he could teach them about marketing. Or if they want to learn real estate, they can learn it from, you know, Ken McElroy or Mr. Landlord. So they're learning from the best in the world at what they do. That's something that you just can't get everywhere. So you mentioned that kind of sideways or kind of hinted at Eric was not on board with homeschooling at first what was his hesitation for that we both had a lot of the same fears that many families do I mean are the kids going to be socialized you know will will we have all the right you know materials to teach them the things they need to learn are they going to keep up with their peers you know what what do we need to know to make this happen it, it took uh we realized that we wanted to do it and we realized the, the benefits behind it. So then we just had to figure out how we could make it happen. And I'm, I'm good at research. That's something I like. And so I figured out how we needed to do it, you know, what forms for the state and what do we need to make sure gets done every year and, and all of that. And then it really, we just got started and we've kind of made it up as we went along. A lot of homeschooling families look for something called a curriculum, which is uh, something it's what you're going to teach for the year. And I wanted one that had financial education in it that would teach my kids about things like money and business and investing. And I couldn't find that anywhere. It just it just didn't exist. And so I realized that if I really wanted to do this and I did, then I was going to have to create it. And so I did, which some people told me was crazy, but I knew what I wanted for my kids. And if you can't go find it, you create it. There's something about that that push to innovate that creates something wonderful. And now I actually have other families that would, would love to be using the same, same concepts and lessons that we were using to teach our kids. So that's something we're working on now. So you're actually working on creating a, a curriculum for, for other parents? For whether it be there be homeschooling families that want to use it, or maybe a family that their kid goes to a regular public or private school, but they want these extra lessons on the side. Okay. It would be something that everyone could use to get their kids more familiar with all these concepts. Cool. And so that will be one of the offers we'll have with for our listeners is the ability to get a hold of you and um, at a minimum encourage you to continue uh, and maybe even better be able to get a hold of your curriculum. And for our listeners that may have been, this is your first time listening to this episode, you need to go back and listen to our episode with both Ethan and Devin, um, and you will find out exactly how well this homeschooling curriculum has happened. I mean, they are were very articulate uh, at the time of the recording. Devin was 15 and Ethan was 13. And Scott, what, what you tell me what... What would you say? Do they seem like 13 and 15 year olds? No, they seem much more <clears throat> mature than that. 
especially when it came to as we're talking about finance and business and things like that like the the kid could talk circles around most of my clients <laughs> both of them so i i mean one of the main questions i have is how did you teach them what what does that curriculum look like did you go through and talk about it and then just be like here here's a contract we need to write today go do it bye it wasn't quite like that. Uh, the The first challenge that I had is Devin learns completely differently than Ethan. Devin needs to see something to understand it. And Ethan really needs something physical in order to learn the lesson. So the first thing I had to learn is when you're teaching a child, what does that child need to learn? What, where, what are their interests? What, what method do they need to learn by? So one of the things that I'm trying to do now is create something that no matter whether your kid learns better by hearing something, by seeing something, by doing something, they've got a way to learn the different lessons. And so I think all teachers, I don't care if it's a parent teaching or a regular teacher, we just need to start tailoring these things to what the different students need. Um, that's one of the things that I talk about in my book because it was such a challenge um, figuring out how to take these lessons and make them applicable to um, I, I, for a kid to learn and but you can it's not that the concepts are beyond them I think to an extent we as parents think that our kids are not as capable at picking these things up than they truly are um, one of the things that we do as a family is we travel around and talk to different groups about intergenerational wealth we want to help for example um, some of these real estate investors they build this great portfolio and then they're a little you know, sad because their kids aren't interested in inheriting that or taking on that once they get older. And so we talk to these families and we actually, we do some of it together and then we split the kids off from the parents. And we actually talk to them in two different rooms so that, you know, Devin, Ethan, and I can talk to the kids and Eric has a chance to talk to the parents and give them the viewpoint from their side. So when we talk to the kids, I'm asking them questions about what are you interested in? And what's so funny to me is I will have a parent say something like, well, my daughter doesn't like real estate. But when I talk to the daughter, we actually had this happen a couple of weeks ago, speaking in North Carolina, the daughter was interested in real estate. She was actually quite passionate about the concept. What she didn't want to do is personally be on site doing drywall or hauling out trash. She didn't understand why that had to be part of investing in real estate. But dad was so convinced she had to do all of this to learn real estate. So there was this disconnect between what the daughter actually wanted and what the dad wanted for her. And I think if they could have just talked a little, little bit more clearly about the expectations on both sides, the same lessons of what he wanted her to learn could be there without her having to do the things she didn't want to do. And then they could have been doing this together. So it sounds like to me there's a... Uh a little bit of a communication issue that you're helping people intergenerationally, which is an issue. I mean, I'm not the same age as Scott here. He's my son. And there are times when we communicate differently. He's, he's a millennial. I'm a generation X. I think that's what they call this. And learning to communicate that that's, that's important. Uh, it's also important to when you're going to do business and going to build your wealth. And like we've said, we, we want to help you build your millions, enjoy your millions and pass it on to the next generation. And this, this is really good at being able to educate the kids. What other kind of things have you seen that have helped uh, facilitate that communication of how to, because, because the parents or the grandparents have amassed this amount of money and passing it on to the next generation. It, it, when it's not done right, it's squandered away. What, what are some mechanisms you've seen to help facilitate that communication? The best thing I usually recommend to people is you need to put it on the kids level. Um, for example, in our book, Eric talks about, you know, it's great when these kids are young and they ask you questions like, why is the sky blue? You know, and Eric would go into, you know, the ref refraction of, ref of the light molecules off of, and he starts going into this, you know, major scientific explanation and the kids just looking at him like, that's not at all an answer I understand. So we really, when we talk to our kids about things like business and real estate and investing and all these different, what we would consider more adult concepts, we need to put it on a kid's level. If I want to talk to a kid about business, the first thing I, I ask them is what their interests are. And if they tell me, look, I, I like walking my dog. Okay, well, did you know you could start a business walking dogs for people and they would pay you to walk their dogs? And all of a sudden these kids light up and they have these ideas of, I can take this thing I really love and somebody's going to pay me to go do this. 
And now all of a sudden they're interested in business. So when you start talking to them about, you know, record keeping and some of these other things, they're more interested. They understand that this is going to get them to be able to do things they love to do and still be able to make money doing it. So for those that don't remember, Devin gave us his example. The first time his four way into investing was something that he was interested in. And that was Legos and how he purchased, a, uh, I believe it was a Death Star Lego set and then the lessons he learns when he turned around to sell that once that set was discontinued by Lego to make a profit basically buy low and sell high like that's that's amazing well, what other kind of business lessons have you learned from being a homeschooling mom that you've been able to apply to business or back and forth uh, another big lesson for me was leadership um, as a parent you obviously need to be a leader for your children but in business, you also need to be leading your team. And when I first got started with my team, I was one of those very quiet, shy, you know, hide in the background kind of people. And all of a sudden I'm supposed to be leading these people. And I had no idea how to do it. And I, I tried Eric's way because he was he came from the military. So he would he would lead with a very militant, you know, demeanor. And and the quiet, shy me attempted that and it worked out terribly. And one of the great lessons I learned is that not everybody leads the same. We all have a different way of approaching leadership that can still work. And I had to figure out what that was for me. But the minute I figured that out for my business, doing that at home with my kids was so much easier. And so really it was business that helped me with that part of it. Cause I still remember you know, times trying to discipline my kids in the early, very beginning and I wasn't as effective as Eric was when it came to some of those lessons because I hadn't figured out how to lead my business team yet. And I didn't know how to do that as a parent. And once it clicked for the business, it absolutely started working at home and it was so much better. So my, the big lesson there is learn to lead the way that works for you. Don't try to do it just like a, somebody else that you know. Very good. I like that. I was going to ask, I'm fumbling here. They'll have to edit this part out. Uh, Scott, you got a question? I was just going to say, <clears throat> what was what was the the point that tweaked it where it finally clicked? Where you were no longer I'm the strict mom. I'm I'm more of what suited to my strengths. Was there a particular event, a particular moment, or some thought, a dream? I don't know. There was a a course I went to called Ultimate Leadership Camp that was uh, held from Peak Potentials at the time. And part of that event was we worked as a group, but then everybody in that group took turns leading at these different projects. And so I got to watch, you know, 10 other people and their leadership styles and how it worked for them. And it was this huge moment of realizing that there isn't one way to lead. There's all these different ways to lead. And I got to see what worked for somebody and what didn't work for somebody. And I got to try it myself and fail a couple times and then figure out what worked. And then I could take that home and do the same same sort of concepts and figure out what was working in the business. And it was amazing when I finally had that success in that, in that particular arena, how good it felt that I could do that with my team. And then when I took it home and it worked with my kids, it was awesome. I like that. When, when we talk on our podcast, we talk a lot about how important your team is when you're amassing wealth. Uh, it sounds like to to me a, a large to a large degree your team is is your husband and two sons. Teams there is, are, go ahead. Uh, there is actually more. I I have an entire team of people that works in the property management company, and so I have the people that do the field work and the people that process applications or that schedule showings, and I really, really couldn't have the business I have without those amazing people on that team. Okay, so about how many would you say is that in your? Yeah, property? I have about a dozen. About a dozen. Okay. So whether it's there or with the husband and two boys, there's been times when there's been conflict. Uh, tell me how the, the two sides, mom, business owner, um, a lesson there in, in helping to, to resolve conflict. A, a team is only as good as the unity, I think, to some degrees. Uh, can you say something about that? That is definitely the key. A team needs to work as a team. That means you can't have one person that thinks that, you know, they are the begin all and end all of that team. And I've, I've hired the wrong people before. I've had the person that thought that 
you know, they could just do it all and they would just run roughshod over the other people on the team. And that really did not, it added a lot of drama and not a lot of results. And so one of the important lessons is get a good team. You've got to be able to pick your team members very well. When my kids come to work with me, it's not so that, you know, they can earn an hourly wage. It's to learn the systems of the business. And one of the lessons that they have learned over the years is that some of the things that make a team good and some of the teams that make a team not good. Um, and they're, they're already aware that having a lot of drama is not useful. It is the team that is focused on the goal and works together that actually accomplishes more. So you've obviously had to get rid of a team member. I mean, that's an unpleasant thing. However, that may be a lesson there that when you notice that there's not the right fit to make a change quickly. Absolutely. It's, it can hurt the entire team if one person is causing problems. So you can make the attempt to, you know, make the correction and hope that they correct and it goes well. But if it doesn't, the longer you hold on, the worse it gets. You know, I have been Go ahead, Scott. I I know that uh, we have a lot of listeners that ask me multiple times when they go to build a team, how do you know when you're hiring the right person? How would you answer that? Well, one of the big mistakes I made in the beginning is I kept trying to hire people just like me, except for the reason you need a team is you need the people that do things better than you in different areas. So part of our book talks about our current receptionist who is probably the best person to have ever sat in that chair, but her personality and Eric's are totally different. And and they think similarly about things like the, the end result, but their personality types are very different. And it's not about be, them being the same as me. It's a, totally about, are they good for that particular job? So, uh, you know, the person that is going to do application processing does a lot of research. If you have somebody that likes to talk, that's not the position for them. You, they need to be more on the sales side where they're going to be talking to people because they will be miserable sitting at that desk or they will spend a lot of time talking to other team members and not accomplishing anything. So you've got to find the right personality for what you need done and the person that has the talent to achieve it. I gotcha. And do you ask specific questions in that to figure out that this person is here or do you just look for, oh, the way one of our guests explained it as an A player, hire the A player and then figure out where they fit? Or how is it that you go about it? Honestly, we have a tendency during interviews to get completely off topic. And I like that because I can then see how do they react when they're not asked questions that pertain to the the typical interview questions. You know, everybody asks the same basic things. But when you start asking, what do you like to do for fun? Or, you know, what was your favorite part about, you know, your last job? And you get them totally off topic or on things that they don't expect that's when you get to see their real personality or you get to see them light up because they're actually interested in a particular thing. And like everything else, if they have more of an interest in it, they're going to be better at it. And so that's what I'm looking for. Gotcha. Tell tell me how your, the publishing of your book has propelled your career, your business. I mean, and, and what, what, why was it that you decided to publish a book? What, what gave you the idea that this is now the time to, to write a book and put it out there? Well, people keep asking us, how did you get your kids to do what they have done? And it's not a one sentence answer. Everybody wants it to be, but it's not. It was the accumulation of these different things that we did. It was the integration of how we brought our kids into business and investing and how the business and investing helped us with our kids. So we wrote the book to really communicate all of the different lessons that played a role in that, how we got the kids interested, how they learned some of the big lessons for us that really made a difference. And so we figured if we could get that information out to more families, maybe more families can have these kinds of results. And we really want people to be doing better than they are. And I think this book is one of the ways for them to get better. So your answer now is a one sentence, read the book. (laughs) Well, now it is, but it wasn't before the book. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. I love it. Um, I want to come back to conflict resolution. And I know, you know, Ethan 
and Devin are phenomenal kids. However, they have not got along all the time. And that's not a, an, a situation where you have the luxury of getting rid of one of the members of the team, like we talked about. Okay. What are some mechanisms or things that you have done there in, you know, helping them to align their thinking? You've already said that they learn differently. What's, what's some things that you've done there? Honestly, one of the best ways they came to resolve conflicts, they designed, it didn't come from me, but I'm sure what what they ended up getting was a lesson because they watched how Eric and I handle different things. And one of the things they designed was if they make an agreement between each other, they're going to write it down. They're going to make their own contract between the two of them. They're both going to sign it and then they have to fulfill that contract. So if one of them says, well, no, that's not what I meant. Well, that's what's on paper. And then they would actually go back to the contract and then that's what would resolve the conflict. What was in the contract? So they actually started using a very similar method to how um, sometimes partners will do things. So there must have been something that went awry early on and there was conflict and then they decided to start having a contract. Is, it it is came what... because they, they were watching us sign leases and then, you know, they would say something to the extent of, well, how come you're doing an eviction? And I'd be talking to them about, well, they were supposed to pay this amount according to their contract. And, you know, here's what happened. And so they were like, oh, yeah, they should be following that contract. So they got the concept and then they just started applying at other places. That's fun. <laughs> I hope you have some copies of those that you can share with their kids or grandkids someday that show you, look, this is what this is how they did it. You should do the same. Or when they get married. I mean, that would be even, that would be a funny thing to bring up, but just a slideshow for, for their spouses. <laughs> be like, I can't yeah, wait to see what he's got for you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Devin's girl, current girlfriend is, uh, her family's involved in real estate also. So when he talks about things like this, she, she completely understands. And, uh, he's very into, you know, writing books also. He's got his books out and Ethan's got his, but uh, his girlfriend had actually written a book also. So they they have that in common as well. And so uh, currently that's not an issue for him. She totally understands everything that goes on. <laughs> Fun. So looking over your business life and as a mother and raising your kids, <clears throat> what do you feel like has been the number one thing that you've done to set your kids up for success? I didn't just teach them. I learned with them. Everyone always is amazed when they see us going to these different conferences because it isn't just me going and it isn't just me and Eric going, but it's the whole family that goes. And there have been a lot of speakers that have noticed that and said, you know, I look down and there's these kids in the front row and it's a surprise for everybody. But one of the big things is we were learning together. And so when we got home, we could talk about the things that we learned and we had more things in common. And we had all of these points that really made us closer as a family. So not only did we get the opportunity to travel together and to learn some of the same information, we also grew together. And I think that's made it easier as far as trying to communicate with them or trying to explain a certain lesson to them because they've heard a lot of the same lessons that I learned while I was learning them also. And I think that's something that I would like more families to be doing. I think it would benefit everybody. That's awesome. Now on the opposite side, is there one thing that if you could go back that would make the whole journey smoother that you'd do differently? No, because even all of my mistakes have been part of my learning and some of them have been painful. Um, it's, it's not always good to, uh, it doesn't feel good when you don't do something right or when you realize that, you know, this big bad thing happened because you made such a bad decision. But all of those things have accumulated to make me who I am, who my kids, who they are. And I wouldn't want to change that even, even though it could take away some of the past pain. I think that was needed for me to grow into who I am. I think too many people try to shy away from the pain but then they miss out on what they could learn and how much better they could be later. So sometimes we just have to make some mistakes. Now take it the other direction. What, where do you see, I don't know whether we should say Lila or the Woolwinds in five years. I will probably not have Devin at home anymore, which will be sad. 
But I hope that as a family, we are still out helping other families learn and grow and grow together. And hopefully we will have more opportunities to uh, encourage people to do things that might be out of the societal norms, things like homeschooling, things like getting your kids investing or in business and doing all these things that may not be normal now, but might be so much better for those kids later. That's cool. Well, we really appreciate you coming on. It's fun to have such a different viewpoint and to see how things have been able to to come together. We've we've had fun learning about not only your story, but the whole family. And we've had a ton of fun getting to know each individual member. And we are really excited to see, see your guys' story as it continues. As we kind of close, is there any final um, words that you would like our listeners to know? Keep learning and take your kids with you. I love that. Jason, any final words? No, that was well said. Keep learning and take your kids with you. I'm all for that. I need to do more of that. <clears throat> yes, you do. And I'm not saying that to be biased. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for coming and joining us again. We've had a bunch of fun. If if our listeners wanted to connect with you, we will put the links in the show notes down below, but just so we can get those, what are those? You can get on our website at clearskytrainer.com and it'll have links to all of our books as well as our newsletter and any other educational info. Perfect. We will put them down below. So just go take a look. If you'd like to connect with Jason or I, make sure to hit us up on our Facebook group, Instagram, Twitter, or shoot us an email. All the links again are in the show notes down below. And remember to hit that subscribe button. If you like the show, give us a five-star review. Both things really help us out. And last, remember, mastering your millions all starts with your mind and your team. Make sure they are the best. Thanks for listening to Master Your Millions with Jason and Scott Henderson. Check the show notes for any links or contact information about today's guests. Make sure to follow the show so you don't miss any future episodes.